Hello everyone and welcome back to our virtual Mishtaburah here. We're holding Mishtaburah Chelek Aleph and hopefully we will be learning today Daf Ayin Aleph Amit Aleph and I get myself in trouble all the time but I hope we're going to do a piece of Ayin Aleph Amit Beis as well. Um, we're continuing to learn Hilchas Trillin and before we begin I just want to mention that the learning of today's share should be a schus for Rufu Shalema for Chaim Yaakov Leib Ben Yehudis and Mina Michal Pesa Bas Kela Tzipa. They should have a Rufu Shalema Bikarov. So we're continuing to learn Hilchas Trillin. We pick up on Ayin Aleph Ahmed Aleph Simin Membez Sif Gimel. Very, very fascinating topic we're going to be discussing today, which is the topic of Tashmishe Kedusha. When you have something that you set aside to be a Tashmish Kedusha, like your Tefillin bag, what is the status of that Tefillin bag? Are you allowed to use it for a Divrei Choyl? Are you not allowed to use it for a Divrei Choyl? And let's take a look at what the Mechari says here. Just before we begin, this is a topic that we've really discussed before, and that is there is a concept of something being Hukza Lemitzvasai. Now, Hukza sounds very, very much like Muktza. Indeed, it is the same word. Muktza, what does Muktza mean? Well, Muktza is the opposite of Muchan. Muchan is something which is prepared for use. Muktza is something which is set aside. In the context, in the context of Hilchis Shabbos, when we look at something and we consider it to be Muktza, very often the basis of the Muktza prohibition is that this is something which is set aside for non-Shabbos use. So let's say one of the most common categories of Muktza is a Dovah Shemalach Le'iser, right? A screwdriver. A screwdriver is Muktza. Why is a screwdriver Muktza? The reason a screwdriver is Muktza is because a screwdriver is not something which is seen as having a Shabbos use. A screwdriver is something that you use in construction, binion, stira. So it's it's set aside for non-Shabbos usage. It's a davar shemalach toil iser. It's something whose main purpose, the work that you do with it, is prohibited, right? Binyan and stira are usher on Shabbos and on Yom Tov. So the screwdriver is a kli shemalach toil iser, and it is a muktza. It's set aside. It's not muchan. Something that has a regular Shabbos use, a chair that you're going to sit by the dining room table, is not muktza, it's muchan. It's prepared for Shabbos use to sit by the table. Now, a kli shemalach iser, if you have a usage for it, which is permissible on Shabbos, so you have a hammer. A hammer is a kli shemalach iser, normally it's muktza. You want to use it to break open a walnut? You're allowed to. It's tzarech mekaimai, tzarech kufai. So if it's something that you have a permissible use for, then you're allowed to use it. Eitzim vavonim, sticks and stones. Unless you prepare them for a Shabbos use, you pick up a big rock and you set it aside to be a doorstop. Now it's not muktzah Shabbos. Why? Because it's muchan. You prepared it for a perfectly permissible Shabbos use. You set it aside to be used as a doorstop. But if you don't designate that rock as a doorstop, then all it is is a rock. A rock does not have a Shabbos use. Therefore, it's muktza. It's set aside. It's not for Shabbos use. When something is huktza limitzvasai, something that is set aside, designated, and used for a, for a mitzvah, depending on the level of mitzvah, etc., etc., oftentimes it becomes usher for use in any other way. So a tefillin bag... If you make a tefillin bag, or you go to an embroidery shop and you order a tefillin bag, right? What are you calling it? It's not a pouch. It's not, can you make me a pouch? What are you going to use the pouch for? Oh, well, I'm thinking to use it for my tefillin. Now, you go, you order a tefillin bag. So you know that you're ordering a tefillin bag. The whole intent over here was that it's a tefillin bag, and it was made as a tefillin bag. If you make something as a tefillin bag, and then you use it as a tefillin bag, now it's a Tashmish Kedusha, and it's set aside for Kedusha. It's set aside for the Tefillin. So you're not allowed to take money and put money in it, even if you're putting that money in it because you want to have it in Shul to give Tzedakah. You can't use it for money. You can't go ahead and put your cell phone 
in the tillin bag. You're going into shul and you want to put away your cell phone. You want to put your cell phone in your tillin bag. No, you're not allowed to. It's set aside as a tashmish kedusha. You're not allowed to use it for a davar shalchayl. This is the topic that we're going to be speaking about today. Says the Mechaber, a top line in the Shulchan Aruch, Ayin Aleph, Amin Aleph, Simen Membe, Siv Gimel. Sudar. We're used to going to an embroidery shop and ordering a tefillin bag, or going to the cipher and ordering a tefillin bag. Back in the day, that wasn't necessarily the case. So somebody needed something to keep his tefillin in. He got a beautiful set of tefillin for his bar He needs to give the bar something to keep the tefillin in. So he takes a sudar. What's a sudar? A sudar is a piece of fabric, a turban. And back in the day, a turban was not something that was shaped and constructed to put on your head as a hat. It was a piece of fabric that you wound around and tied and tucked in to make a, to make a turban out of it. So a sudar, essentially, is just a big piece of fabric. So sudar, somebody takes a sudar, the azmine, and he prepares it, le meitzar be tefillin le'olam. So he needs, got to give his bar mitzvah, something to put the tefillin in. He gets a sudar, and he says, oh, this is the sudar, I'm going to use this sudar to wrap up the trillin, this is going to be my son's trillin bag. Now, the Mechaber says the word here, la'olam, that he prepared it to be used as a wrapping for the trillin, la'olam, forever. Now, the Mishnah is going to discuss, is the Mechaber being dafke here or not? Does the Mechaber mean that the hazmana, the preparation of this sudar, has to be, the thought process had to be that it's going to be used at, for the trillin forever? Or if he just says, okay, this is going to be my son's trillin bag, my son's trillin wrapping, even if he doesn't say forever, that's already a hazmana. We'll get into that in the Mishnah Bura. But in any case, what the Mechaber says, somebody took the Sudar and Azmine, he prepared it for use with the trillin. Sudar, the Azmine in Lebeitza Beit Tfilin, a Sudar that somebody prepared for use with Tfilin, La'olam, forever. Vitsor Beit Tfilin, Chodazimna, and now he actually used it to wrap up the tefillin, even just one time. So there are two factors over here. One factor is hazmana. It was prepared for use for tefillin. How, what was the form of the preparation? Well, in the case of the mechaber, we're talking about a pre-existing suder. It's not that somebody did a meisim. He didn't weave the cloth to make it as a tefillin cloth as a tefillin wrapping, there was an existing sudder, an existing piece of fabric, and Azmane, he set it aside. I'm going to use this for the tefillin. So that's one factor. One factor is the hazmana. The second factor is vitsar be tefillin chadazimna. And then he actually used it to wrap tefillin, even if only one time, says the mechaber, also lemeitza bezuze. You're no longer allowed to use it to put money in it, you're, you're not allowed to use it for any um, davar shalchayl. The thing that the, that the Mechaber picked on was to wrap up money in it. Can't use it as a wallet anymore. So, again, you have these two factors. You took the sudar and you prepared it, azmine. You set it aside for use for tefillin. And then you actually used it. If you have both of those factors, it is now also, you now can't use it for a davar shalchayl. Let's go back to Ayin Aleph, Ahmed Aleph, and let's see the Mishdura. Mishdura is cut and test, says the Chavetz Chaim. In the Mechaber's case, we're talking about a pre-existing Sudar, says the Mishdura. V'hu adin im asa kis mechadosh l'tzarech tefillin. The same thing would be if you actually went and physically made a pouch. You made a tefillin bag. V'hu adin im asa kis mechadosh you're still, it still doesn't become Aser until you actually use it. Let's, let's realize what the Mishnah is saying. The case of the Mechaber is you had a pre-existing cloth. So you did not make this cloth for use with Tefillin. You had a pre-existing cloth. Asmine, verbally, you said, I'm oh. You see that cloth? I'm going to use that cloth for the tefillin. In that case, said the Bechaber, you have that factor. You have the factor of your hazmana. Add to it the factor that you used it once for tefillin. 
Now it becomes Aser. Now says the Chavetz Chaim, how about if we make a case that sounds like it should be a little bit more Chomer, it should be a little bit more stringent, and that is, it's not that there was a pre-existing cloth, and your Hasmana only was a verbal Hasmana. You just said, I'm going to use it for tefillin. How about if you actually went to the sewing machine, and you took fabric, and you made a pouch, and you made it for tefillin. So that's a, it sounds like, it's a much more intense, a higher level of Hasmana than just taking a pre-existing cloth and saying, I'm using it for tefillin. Points out the Chavetz Chaim, even in the second case, even in the second case, where you actually went and sewed the pouch for the tefillin, still, still, it doesn't become usher to use for a davar shal until you actually use it for tefillin once. If all you did was make it for the tefillin, that is not enough to usher it for a davar shal And the Mishra says, why? Because we paskin, generally speaking, that hazmana lav milsi, a simple act of preparation, even if in this case it was a physical act of preparation, is not enough to make the item usher for a davar shal Continues the Chavetz Chaim. V'hu adin b'chal tashmishe kedusha. This same halacha that asmar alav milsi applies to any tashmishe kedusha, anything that's used for a davar shebi kedusha. Afilu tik l'sefer Torah. Even a sefer Torah mantle. A sefer Torah mantle. You made it for the sefer Torah. You set it aside for the sefer Torah. But until the day you actually put it on the sefer Torah, it is not considered. It doesn't have any kedusha yet. Hasman alav milsi. Vitashmish detashmish, but something that's a tashmish detashmish, something that's not a tashmish kedusha. So it's not the bag that you're putting the tefillin in. It's the talis bag. You you made a bag for tefillin. Now you put the tefillin in the tefillin bag. The tefillin bag is a tashmish kedusha. Now you take the tefillin bag. You put it inside the talis bag. Talis bag we're going to see is not a tashmish kedusha. You know why? Because a talis is not a davar shebik dusha. A talis is a davar shel chayl that you use for a mitzvah. It's a tashmish mitzvah, like a shoifer. A shoifer does not inherently have kedusha. It's tashmish a mitzvah. It's something that you use in the performance of a mitzvah. But it's not a tashmish kedusha. It has no inherent kedusha. Tvilin have inherent kedusha. So tvilin are a davar shebik dusha. The tvilin bag is a tashmish kedusha. The, you take the tefillin in the tefillin bag, you put it in the talus bag, the talus bag is only tashmish mitzvah. So therefore, the talus bag is also only a tashmish to tashmish of the tefillin. It's, you'll say, why is it a davish, why is it a tashmish kedusha? The tefillin in the tefillin bag are now inside the talus bag. So why doesn't the talus bag become a tashmish kedusha? Because it's not. It's a tashmish to tashmish. You have the tefillin in the tefillin bag, and then the tefillin bag with the tefillin are inserted in the talis bag. Second generation. So the tefillin are a davar shebikdusha. The tefillin bag, the beautiful embroidered tefillin bag, is a tashmish kedusha. The plastic bag that you put it into to protect the embroidered bag is a tashmish to tashmish. Says the Mishnah Berurah, who had been tashmish kedusha, I feel tickled to say the tashmish to tashmish, ain't by kedusha klal. No kedusha on the tashmish to tashmish. So the, the plastic bag, the outer plastic bag of the tefillin bag, you want to put money in it? Go ahead. You want to put your cell phone in it? Go ahead. There's no kedusha to the tashmish to tashmish. Ois cotton yud. The Mechavit said, we're talking about here a suder, the azmine. You prepared it for use for tefillin. Says the Mishnah, what does this mean, azmine? How did you prepare it? Afilu Even only verbally. You went, you took the suder. Oh, that's a beautiful bolt of cloth. I'm going to use that to wrap up my son's tefillin. So that's enough. That's already one factor. That's Hazmano. The Chosh Kedim Nataloi Va'amar Zeyyele Tefillin the Mahani. Certainly, if you go ahead and you actually pick it up, right? You pick up the cloth and you say, oh, this is a beautiful bolt of cloth. I'm going to use it for, to wrap up the tefillin. So it's not just verbal. You did somewhat of a Misa. You picked it up and you set it aside. That's certainly the Mahani. That is certainly effective. What does it mean that it's effective? That provides us 
with one of the factors that we need to make it usher. Again, two factors, hazmana and amaisa. So here you have the hazmana. Even if it's just verbal, that makes a hazmana. Then you actually put tefillin in it. Now you have both factors, it becomes usher. Vayin bebir alacham ashikasafti b'shem aran. Ois katan yod alif tefillin. Over here, the Mechaber is talking about a Sudr that you used to wrap up tefillin. Now the Mishnah is going to talk about something that I touched upon, and that is the talus bag. Says the Chavetz Chaim. V'tik shel talus, a talus bag, loy mikri tashvish kedusha. A talus bag is not a tashvish kedusha. Rak tashvish mitzvah. It's only something that serves a dover shel mitzvah. And therefore, in your talus bag, you're allowed to keep other things in your talus bag. Because the talus is not a Dover Shebi Kedusha. Talus does not have Kedusha. It's a Tashmish Mitzvah. Talus is a Dover Shel Mitzvah. So the talus bag is a Tashmish, tashmish Mitzvah. The Af the Munach by Gamkein Tik Shel Tfilin. Even though you'll ask, what do you mean? I put my Tfilin bag into the talus bag. So now, the talus bag is a tashmish de tashmish. It's two generations removed from the tefillin. Now this is interesting. How about a lot of people put into their talus bag, they put in the tefillin bag, they put in the talus, and then they put in a sitter. Now the sitter is a davr shebik dusha. Sitter has, has the shame in it. So the sitter is a davr shebik dusha. I think to a lot of people, this is counterintuitive. A lot of people somehow look at the talus like being elevated above the sitter. No, it's not. The sitter is a Dabr Shemek Dusha. It has the Shem Hashem hundreds of thousands of times in it. The talus? Talus is a Tashvish Mitzvah. That's all it is. So says the, the Mishnah Brura, V'afilu im nasan b'soichai ha sitter shaloi. Even if you're in the habit of keeping your sitter in your talus bag, the yesh by Kedusha, and the sitter is a Dabr Shemek Dusha, Oi had tefillin below tick, or even let's say you put your tefillin in the talus bag without a tefillin bag. So now you're putting the tefillin directly into the talus bag. Still says the Chavetz Chaim, the talus bag is still not attached to kedusha. Why? Mikamakaim. Nevertheless, beis had tzorich. When you have a need for it, mutali ten b'saychay dram shalchayil. You could put dram shalchayil in the talus bag. Even though you put a sitter in it, even if you put the tefillin directly into it. Why? Because, what do you call it? A talus bag. That means it was made for the talus. Talus is a davr If you made it lechatechila for a davr you made it for a talus, then I don't care if you put your tefillin directly in it. You made it out tonight. You made it for a davr for a talus. So then, even if you put your tefillin directly in it, you could still put other things in it. Mr. Ruru says, if you have a tzorich. Vevikilu hisna. This is as if you made originally a tanai. Ukilakaman bahagal. We're going to discuss it tonight. Vaisan ha'anoshim. Those people, ha'holchin bederech, who travel. Umishtamishin besak shel tefillin bedvarm shalchot. Says, you have people who travel, and because they're traveling, they need a bag to put things in. So they put dvarm shalchot into their tefillin bag. After Medina Osir, even though Me'ikra Din, like we're seeing over here, the Chavetz Chaim says this is Osir. Afal Piken Yesh Lalamid Alei Hanzchus, and this is the way of Gedolim. The way of Gedolim is not to condemn people. You should know. The way of Gedolim is Adarabat to be Malamid Tzchus on people. We saw this by the Rishiv Zatzal, by Rav Moshe Zechitzal of Kadosh Lavracha all the time. He didn't look and condemn people. Oh, look at what those people do! It's Geferlach. Look at what those people do! It's terrible. If he saw that a, a significant section, a significant segment of Klal Yisrael was knowing a certain way, not if it was a Dover, Mami should Dover Osir, but if there was a way to be Malam Tzchus, he was Malam Tzchus. And the Chavetz Chaim says over here, you have people that travel and they do this, even though after Medina Osir. The Chavetz Chaim says, Mikar did it's Tak Osir. We could still be Malam Tzchus on them. How? The Kevin de Regilin Bakach, and the way to be Malamit Schus is to realize that since this is something that many people are, are in the habit of doing, Havikilu Histubitchila. So that blibes it remains as something that it's as if the talus the Tfilin bag was made all tonight. 
if a lot of people do that, if people habitually do that, so then it's understood that the tefillin bag is used for those usages of a davar shachayil, and that's like you made it today in mitchila. Vafapike lechatchila inoch elases came. Badukav tzchayim says certainly lechatchila we should not do this. Ois kad yudbeis. The words of the mechaber were suder de azbene lemeitza be tefillin laolam. A suder that you are mazmin, you prepared it, and like we said, even only verbally, but you prepared it for use for tefillin la'olam, forever. Says the Mishnah, Yeshayim Rehim, Dafka Beferish. There are those that learn, the Mechaber, that the Mechaber is using, using this Lashen, Badafka. And the Mechaber means, when do you have a problem? When do you asser the tefillin bag? If when you made the Hazmana, you made it beferish that you're using the tefillin bag forever. So it's not that you picked up the cloth and you said, oh, this is a beautiful purple cloth. Purple is such a royal color. I'm going to use this for the tefillin bag. Uh, I'm going to use this for the tefillin bag. There are those that say that that's not enough of a hasmana because you didn't say you're going to use it for a tefillin bag forever. So, okay, so after a week, you changed your mind. So now you want to use it for a davar shachoyl? Go ahead, use it for a davar shachoyl. That's the way some people learn. Yesh aimrim dafke beferish. There are those that learn that the bag only becomes usher if the hasmana was made clearly forever. Avol bestama. But if someone just said, beautiful purple cloth, I'm going to use it for tefillin. And he didn't say forever. So then we don't say that his hasmana was a hasmana forever. Because it's a cloth. It's not a tefillin bag. It's a cloth. So you pick up a cloth and you say, I'm going to use this for the tefillin. That doesn't give it a designation to be a tefillin wrapping forever because it's a cloth. Tefillin bag would be different. Let's see. However, the Chavitz Chaim says in the beer agra, it's mashma, that even if he doesn't say forever, if he said, I'm going to use it for, for a tefillin wrapping, that's as if he said forever, and that's an effective. It, it is an effective hazmana. I why did the mechaber say lo elam? V'loimiyeh ta mechaber bazeh, and the mechaber by saying lo elam was only coming to exclude elahecha dehisne shaloyi arak levisha v'loy lo elam. When the mechaber said lo elam, he didn't mean that the hazmana is only a hazmana if you say lo elam. He meant that min hastam means oilam. And oilam creates a problem. But if somebody would say, my tefillin bag didn't come yet. I ordered a tefillin bag for my son. It wasn't ready yet. Here's a beautiful piece of cloth. I'm going to use, it, use this for the first two weeks. I'm going to use this as, as a tefillin wrapping. Then that's not a hasmana. That's going to create an iser. Because it's not forever. So you change your mind. You want to use it for something else. Go ahead. V'yamasa kiss l'han yach tefillin. But... If you're making a tefillin bag, right? It's not just a pretty, you know, a pretty cloth. It's, you made a tefillin bag. If you go to an embroidery shop and you say to them, Aseli kiss shell tefillin, make me a tefillin bag. Then everybody would agree you don't need the words forever. You go to the embroidery shop, you say, make me a tefillin bag. Right? That's considered a hazmana, and it's hazmana la'olam. Even if you didn't say la'olam. There's no, it's a tefillin bag. That's what it is. So, so far we've covered the first factor that creates an iser, and that's the hazmana. Now we come to the second factor, which is like the words of the Mechaber, v'tzorbe tefillin chadazimna. That you actually used it for tefillin, even if only once. So you have a hazmana, which is Azmana la'olam, either Beferish or Minastam, it's Azmana la'olam, and now you actually go and use it for tefillin, even one time, now it becomes Azur. Says the Mishra, is cut Yud-Yil. V'tzarbe, kol zeh First thing that the Mishra Brewer points out is that realize this whole Iser can only exist if we're talking about something that belongs to you. Aval ein adam Iser davashen shaloi, but... You can't go ahead and ask for something that belongs to somebody else. So you picked up somebody else's beautiful bolt of cloth and you said, I'm going to use this for tefillin. 
it doesn't become usher even if you wrap tefillin in it because it's not yours. You can't usher something that belongs to somebody else. Ella imkain ganav beged unless you steal uh, a garment or a piece of cloth vachatachai and you cut it vaasa bimenu kiss and you make a pouch out of it daaz kange bishina maisa. Now you were kind of it through Shino Maisa, and now the Asra, now you can make an Asra. How about a Katan? The Katan Shetzarbe Tvilin Bakis Shazmina Lakach. How about if you did a Hazmana on a pouch or on a cloth, and now you gave it to a Katan, you gave it to your son while he's still a Katan, and the Katan took the Tvilin and put it into the cloth. Does that provide you with the second factor to Asra it? Is the cotton's maisa a maisa? So the cotton shetzar be tefillin ba'kish as mina l'kach gam kein nesar. That will also asa the cloth. Aval dover an nesar ba'hazman l'chud k'moishe yisbayer. But something that becomes aser only through hazmana. We're going to see later at the end of this sif that there are things that become aser with hazmana alone. So. Dover on Nesar Bazman al Khud, we're going to see, for example, if you make cloth, you take hide and you make cloth, you make parchment, and you do it Lishem Sevatira or Lishem Tfilin, that that act of Hazmana, even though you didn't write words on it yet, you didn't write a Pasuk, you didn't write the Shem Hashem on it yet, but you made it, you made the cloth. L'shem Kedusha Sevatera, that has mana alone will make it usher. So, Avodavar HaNesar Ba'azmana L'chud Kamei She'izbar, Loi Mitzar Ba'azmana Skaton. The Azmana of a Katon would not usher that item. The Katon Yesh Loi Maisa Ve'e Loi Machshava, because the Maisa of a Katon is a Maisa, but the Machshava of a Katon is not a Machshava. Afilu Gila Machshavtam B'diburam, even if they made their Machshava very clear, through a verbal statement, their das is not a das. Katon ain't loy das. So if you provided the hazmana, if you set aside the cloth for use as tefillin, and now the katon did a maisa, he put the tefillin in the cloth and wrapped it up, that maisa is considered a maisa. The maisa of the katon is considered a maisa. And the machshava, the hazmana, you did. So you have the hazmana of a gadol and the maisa of a katon, that will answer it. But something that's only going to become usher through hazmana, the katan's hazmana is not a hazmana because he doesn't have das. Before we go on to the to the next ice cotton here in the Mishnah Brewer, I I remembered just now. I remembered just now. I forgot to bring it upstairs with me. That I had in mind that I wanted to try each day now during you know, these yom neraim to say something about slichus. You know, slichus to many people is like a closed book. Even nowadays with Art Scroll, I encourage people that they should, this is what I do, you should sit down the day before or the night before and prepare the next day's slichus. But if you don't prepare the next day's slichus, even if you have interlinear in English and linear and this, that, and the other thing, it's hard while you're saying the slichus in shul at the pace that the shul goes, to really follow and really know what it is that you're saying. There was a line in Slichus this morning that struck me. And that is, we turn to the Rabbi Shalalam. I don't have the text right here in front of me, but we turn to the Rabbi Shalalam and we say to the Rabbi Shalalam that we are embarrassed, we're ashamed, and we feel ourselves to be like a clear rake, like an empty keli. What does that mean, an empty keli? You have a lot of empty kalim in your house, right? I mean, you, you have a, a pitcher that you use by the Shabbos table. All week long, it's empty, right? It's an empty keli. An empty keli still has chashivus. You have lots of empty keli. When you need them, you fill them up. The The idea that a person comes to the Rabbi Yishlam and says that he's mavuza because he feels like he's an empty keli. Yeah. The Rabbi Yishlam made you. The Rabbi Yishlam fashioned you. The Rabbi Yishlam gave you abilities. The Rabbi Yishlam gave you strengths. He gave you capabilities. He, 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 he gave you a tafkid. He gave you the, the strengths and the abilities that you need to fill a role in this world. If you're not doing it, then you're an empty keli. If you're not doing it, then you're a keli that was created for a certain purpose and it's not being used. 
a keli that was created for a certain purpose, and now it never gets used for that purpose? You know, imagine, a keli, somebody put a tremendous amount of work into a keli to use it for a certain purpose, and then it has a flaw of some kind that it never gets used. It's a waste. That's what we come to the Rabbi Yisham, where we say we feel like we're not doing enough. We feel like we're not doing enough to be memala ar tafkid, and we're embarrassed and ashamed because of that. Okay. Onwards. Ice cut in your dalid here on Ayin Aleph of Ibez. The Mechaber said, so we had Hazmana. Now you actually put tefillin in it, Chad Zimna, even if only one time. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Afshal Yerak Lefisha, Du Darak Arai. You were Mazmin the Suder. You made Hazmana to use it for tefillin. You said, I'm going to set aside, I'm using this fabric for tefillin. Right? It's laying there for a week, for a month. It's, it's laying there. Now you get the tefillin from the cipher, and uh, oh, I need a place to, I need something to wrap these tefillin in for today. But tomorrow I'm taking them out and I'm bringing it back to the batamacher. I want the batamacher to do something with it. You take the soda, you wrap up the tefillin in it. Now, the mice of wrapping up the tefillin in it, you said I'm only doing it temporarily. Since when you went and you wrapped it up, you just put it in and wrapped it up and you did it in a stam. You didn't say, I'm only doing it. You see, in, in the case I gave you, you I said, I, I need a place to keep it for a day. No, the guy got the tefillin, he put them in, he wrapped them up. Then the next day, maybe he found a nicer cloth. So, or maybe an hour later, he found a nicer cloth. So he took the tefillin out. So he never ended up making it a kfios. He never had it in there for any length of time. It's not like the cloth was used for five years. It was used for an hour. So it was Mam Shterech Harai. Kevan Shahoya Bistama. Since when you put the tefillin in, you did it stam. Mitzarfina na maisa la hazmana. That gives us a hazmana. You had a hazmana that was la oilam. And then you had a maisa. You actually put them in and wrapped it up. With Mitzarf, we combine the hazmana and the maisa. And we create an iser. It answers the, the suda. But if you did verbally speak out, you made a hazmana but then when you went to put the tefillin in, you said, I'm only putting them here for an hour, or I'm only putting them here for a day, then I'm taking them out. Then later you could use it for a davar shalchayl. Why? Because again, we need two factors to generate the iser. The first factor is the hazmana. The hazmana is verbal. I'm using this cloth for tefillin. Then you need a maisa, that you actually put tefillin in it. In this case, if you made a verbal hazmana, and then when you went to do the maisa, you said, I'm only using it temporarily, your second verbal statement, that you're doing it temporarily, nullifies your original verbal statement of hazmana. So now you lost one factor. You no longer have the hazmana. All you have is the maisa. And the maisa was only temporary. So the, fir- the second verbal declaration that it's temporary nullifies the first one. V'im asa kis l'shem tefillin. But if your hazmana was not a verbal hazmana, it was a hazmana of a maisa, you made the tefillin bag. So now your asmana wasn't just a verbal asmana, it was a physical asmana. You actually made the tefillin bag, vitzarbe tefillin chadazimna, and then you put tefillin in it once. I feel Even if when you put the tefillin in the bag, you said clearly, I'm only keeping it here for an hour, then I'm taking it out. Also, then it becomes aser. Why? Because again, what's the mechanics here? The reason in the first case the bag remain the suda remains mutter is because you had a verbal hazmana, you nullified the verbal hazmana with a verbal statement that I'm only using it temporarily, and then you used it temporarily. Now it doesn't become usher. In the second case, your hazmana wasn't a verbal hazmana, it was a physical hazmana. You made the tefillin bag. That's a physical hazmana. That's a hazmana of a maisa. You cannot nullify that act of hazmana by then saying, when you put the tefillin in, I'm only putting them in temporarily. You had a physical asmana, 
and you have a maisa that you put the tefillin in, the tefillin bag becomes also. Vo'adin imoye kis asui, same thing would apply. Let's say the bag was already made. It was a pouch. You had a pouch. It wasn't made as a tefillin bag. You had a beautiful pouch. It could be used for anything. You could put money in it. You could put tools in it. I don't know. But it was a pretty bag. So you had this bag. Now you want to use it as a tefillin bag. To use it as a tefillin bag, you want to add some decoration. So you made some nice letters and you wrote tefillin on it. So now you beautified the bag, l'shem tefillin. That counts as a maisa hazmano. Says the Mishnah, where I din, am I a kiss also if the bag was already made? Vahoysef by eze davar l'tzarech tefillin. And now you added something to it for the sake of the tefillin, l'na oisai, to beautify it, have a kimisha osa a kiss l'shem tefillin. That's called azmano of a maisa. Unless you remove what you did. Vayin bebir halacha. Ice cut and test. In this case, we have azman and a maisa. Oser. It becomes also to use it for a davish hachayel. La oilam. This is very important. It becomes oser forever. Afilu la achashit is kalkal. Even if it gets old and ruined, vein roi oid lutfilin. V'tzarek geniza. So you have a tfilin bag that you used for 30 years and now it's all worn out and you want to get yourself a new tefillin bag. So you get a new tefillin bag, you put your tefillin into the new tefillin bag, you have this old tefillin bag. You say, what should I do with this old tefillin bag? Oh, you know what? I have a few extra gartlich. I'll keep my gartlich in the old tefillin bag. No. No, you can't do that. A gartl, well, apologies to those people who are very, very attached to their gartlich. A gartl is not a Dover Shemidusha. There's no Kedusha to a gartl, sorry. It's not even a Tashri Shal Mitzvah. It, it's, it's a nice thing. I'm not denigrating the meaning of wearing a gartel. But it's not a Dovish Dusha. I don't even think it's a Tashri Shal Mitzvah. Right? So, so could you put the gartel in the Tfilin bag? No. No. You can't. The Tfilin bag, it has Kedusha. It has Kedusha's Tfilin. It's a Tashri Kedusha. So it's Sarek Geniza. If you have old Tfilin, I don't know about Puzzle of Tfilin. I have to think, I, we have to see. But if you have old, you know, an extra pair of Kosher Tfilin, you could use it for that. You can't use it for a Ben Tam Tfilin, Rabbi Isai. If it was made for Rashi Tfilin, you can't use it for a Ben Tam Tfilin. That would be a notch down. So you can't do that. So Tzor Kinezah, you have to put it in the Shemus. Oiz Kod Tezayin Zuze, you can't use it for money. V'chein Shar Dover. Afil Dover Shiesh Pai Kedusha Kol Shul Lamata B'Tfilin. Kigoyin Mezuzah V'Chanal. B'Sim Alamit Beis of Ches. You can't use the Tfilin bag for money, but you also can't use the Tfilin bag even for a lesser Darish Kedusha. If you're a cipher and you have extra mezuzahs, you can't put extra mezuzahs in an old tefillin bag because mezuzah is a notch down in Kedusha lower than tefillin. And the tefillin bag has Kedusha's tefillin. You can't demote the tefillin bag. Why did the Mechaber use the example of money? He could have used a bigger Kedush. He could have said mezuzahs. That's because it's gonna, later on we're gonna, it's going to be necessary. So because he wanted to say Zuzi later, he said it's Zuzi now. Well, if he's at, in accordance with this, Ein la se sidr bekis shehal yamayuchid metchila letfilin lavad. Very important, Talacha. If you have a tefillin bag, right? You bought it as a tefillin bag and you put tefillin in it. So it had hazmana for tefillin, and it was used for tefillin. You can't put a sitter in it. A sitter is a davar shabidusha, but it's certainly a lower level than the tefillin. So you could put the sitter in the outside plastic bag, or you could put the sitter in your talis bag, but you can't put your sitter in the tefillin bag. You can't put a mirror in your tefillin bag. You can put it in the outer bag, but not in the regular bag. But again, the Chavetz Chaim wants to be Malam Tzchus. Vafal Pikain, Ein Limchais Bazer. We shouldn't be Moicha when we see people doing this. They came into Regil and Bazer because since people are used to doing this, have a like Ki'ilu Hisnu Metchila. It's as if there's a Tanai Metchila. It's as if people understand that the Tfilin bag is made with the assumption and understanding that it's going to be used for a sitter in a Tfilin as well. Chanal b'siv cotton yud aleph. Okay, stop over here. So we did get a good piece of ayin aleph from an aleph done. We'll continue next time with the words of the Rama here on ayin aleph from the base. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman Atar. Discuss Liman Atar. Should we bang it on Klai Yisrael?
The Rabbi Shem should say Yeshua is the first Parnassah should do him to all those in need, and we should be zeichet to see the Biaskal Tzedek Ben Harav Yamenu Amen. Be well.